he started to get ready for a shower and uh, went in the bathroom and with that I heard him dropping the soap and he must have dropped it like 10 times and I go what the heck's going on in here you know well at that point he was going over so I got in there and I just helped him get down on the ground watched his head put some towels under his head but I called 911 right away at first I wasn't sure but then when I saw his face his mouth started to droop I knew right then and then it was a stroke. When we arrived on scene, the patient was just exhibiting signs of a possible TIA or CVA, you know, a, a transient ischemic attack, which is essentially a stroke. It was very frightening. Once we were able to get the patient out of the bathroom and in the back of the ambulance, that's when really stroke training really started to kick into play where we were able to interlink with the emergency department, with those hospital physicians. So the medics in the field has an iPad, and they essentially make a Skype phone call to me. I can receive that here in the ED, and I can see the patient. The only other way to really duplicate that would be to have a physician in the back of the ambulance. There's no other hospital doing this kind of work in Northeast Ohio. The idea is, through all of our community hospitals, including our main campus, to make this system wide. So they could see him, they knew his mouth was drooped, they knew he wasn't focusing, they knew he could not talk well. So whenever you get a stroke, you worry about immediately, what do I see? Your damage is right now, and how quickly can I reverse that? Time is a key. And the best way to actually think of a stroke is to think of it like a heart attack. You have a blockage to the blood vessel, you have chest pain, how quickly can I put my stent in? Stroke is the same way. Hence, we call it now a brain attack, just like a heart attack. So the idea is, how quickly can I reperfuse that portion of the brain that's kind of in shock, kind of waiting for blood supply? Shuts down, not permanent damage, it's temporary damage. How quickly do I get blood flow back to that area of the brain so that all, whatever function that part of the brain is affected is, you get the function back. Like in David's case, for example, within 24, 48 hours, the arm that you couldn't move, guess what, now you're moving that arm. You know, the speech that you lost, now you have it back. That's what our telestroke program is going to do. It's going to decrease that time that it takes for me to give a medicine or to do an intervention that's going to return blood flow to that part of the brain. Strokes are like heart attacks. Seconds count. Minutes count. Time was of the essence, they kept telling me. They said, well, Parma Hospital has a stroke unit now. So I said, you take him wherever is the best for him. So we knew right away, once he came in, this is a candidate for TPA. So the idea is, if you're not having a hemorrhagic stroke, if you're not bleeding, there's a likelihood that there's a clot that's causing your stroke, that's blockaging. TPA basically starts to dissolve away of that clot. That's the goal of TPA. Well, I'm glad I went to Parma for the stroke uh, unit. Mm -hmm. I just do think that helped me come along farther than, faster than if I wouldn't have had a stroke clinic and paramedics wouldn't have been I trained in it, I think I'd be much farther behind than I am right now. I truly did not think he would make it. I really, really did not. By us having the ability to be able to communicate this in real time to the physician, I definitely think that had David been maybe in another community, that his outcome would definitely be different. There's not a question in my mind. And it's not just Life itself is quality. You used to be able to eat and swallow, now you can't. You used to be able to speak, talk, now you can't. You used to be able to walk, run, now you can't. So you think of the quality of life. You return that function to that individual. You can't put a price on that. I'm thankful for his life. There's nothing else you can say. Second time around, I'll be better. <laughs> That's what he keeps telling me. Second time around, he says, because this happened, he says he's going to sharpen up a little. I'll take him the way he was, though. <laughs>